When the media came for Hillary, you're under arrest. It hurt her. Her credibility with her base was destroyed or at least weakened. However, when it came to Donald Trump, China, China, the media could say whatever they wanted, but he would actually gain from it. Trump would actually get stronger when the media attacked him. Trump was anti-fragile and Hillary was fragile. Let's look at Damocles. You see, Damocles was a hero or at least a character in Greek mythology and he accepted the throne of his kingdom under the condition that a sword be suspended over his head and the sword was suspended by a single length of horsehair. You see the slightest shock and that sword will come crashing down on his head and Damocles was f***ed. Damocles was fragile. And next we have the phoenix. You see, phoenix is a mythical bird. What's so special about it is you can't kill it. You can put the phoenix through a wood chipper and next day it's back at work. You can put, you can shoot the phoenix in the head and a couple hours it'll just regenerate. But the phoenix never gets any stronger. So it's phoenix is a robust system. So this is kind of fun actually. Shooting outdoors instead of inside. Yeah, I'm not going down this way, I'll fall. Guaranteed. I'm a fragile system. All right, down we go. Next, we're gonna talk about the Lernian Hydra. The Hydra, the multi-headed beast of ancient Greek mythology, was what Hercules fought. So Hercules, one of his tasks was to kill the Hydra, and when he was fighting it, he chopped off his head. But he, when he chopped off the Hydra's head, another grew in its place. So the Hydra was twice as strong. They cut off both heads. Now the Hydra is four times as strong. Cut off four heads. He has 16 heads, 36 heads. And every time the Hydra was attacked, it would go stronger and stronger to the point even the great Hercules could not fight the Hydra. So Hercules could no longer fight with his strength. He had to fight by being strategic, which is something I highly advocate on this channel. Hercules decided to take a burning hot sword, a red hot sword, and then he would cauterize the, the neck stumps of the Hydra. So he would cut off a Hydra's head and then he would burn it with that burning sword and that would prevent it from growing a new head. You see, Hercules to defeat the Hydra had to take away the Hydra's ability to be anti-fragile. He had to take away the anti-fragile power of the Hydra in order to win. So at this point you might be asking, well, why is this relevant to you? You're not Hercules, you're not Phoenix, you're not Damocles. How did you become anti-fragile? Well, you already kind of are. A healthy human being, when he gets, you know, the flu, some other disease, and recovers from it, will actually be anti-fragile against that disease. He'll be stronger against that virus once he's done recovering. Your immune system is an example of an anti-fragile system. The next question is, are your systems fragile? I've told you in a different video that discipline is one part of success, but it's more important, or at least equally important, to have success systems in your life. And these systems need to be robust or even anti-fragile. So a common system which everybody on YouTube always loves to talk about is monk mode. You know, the idea that you give up a lot of things and you have to make these sacrifices and be completely disciplined for a couple months and you'll find amazing success. I have nothing against monk mode, but you have to know that monk mode is a fragile system. When you break your discipline, you break your streak of monk mode, immediately your brain thinks, you know, if you've already broken the streak, you've already messed up, so you might as well mess up more. So what I find in monk mode and also for my coaching clients is they get on monk mode and then they mess up, you know, they don't take their cold shower one day or they go back to bad habits like, a, like porn or something. I mean, once they've breached their discipline, it becomes a snowball effect and they just keep breaching their discipline. And that way monk mode never actually works for them or and it didn't even work for me 
because it relied on perfect discipline, which is fragile. The slightest break and your discipline has gone, and then the rest of the system doesn't work. So I'm not a huge fan of monk mode anymore. I think the better option is to have habits and systems which understand that you do make mistakes, do have breaches in discipline, and still propel you towards future success. Do you hear the tree creaking? I feel like that branch is going to fall off anytime. And then we have people who can be anti-fragile. A great example is Jordan Peterson. You know, the entire media establishment, the whole university system came after him, called him, you know, racist and bigoted and homophobic and this and that. But in the end, you know, he actually rose from that. And now he's more popular than ever and more credible than ever because he was able to stand up to his opposition. So he, I believe, is an anti-fragile person. And of course, entire nations can be anti-fragile. Best example I can think of is the Roman Republic after the Second Punic War. So Hannibal Barca, the finest military general of history, Carthaginian general, he took his army with elephants and marched them from the north of Italy through the Alps in winter and came into the Roman Republic completely by surprise with his whole army and, and he was such a good general that he would just destroy Roman armies left, right and center with an army half their size and the Romans, the Romans would, you know, they don't give up. Romans in that time period, they don't know how to give up. They would send army after army against Hannibal Barca and they would lose, they would lose 60,000 men, 80,000 men. They would lose a whole part of their population just in a day. But you see, the Roman Republic, not the Roman Empire, at least in its later stages, was anti-fragile. The Roman Republic eventually defeated the genius general Hannibal and came out stronger on the other side, destroyed the Carthaginian Empire, salted their fields, raised their lands, erased Carthage from the records. And then they created an empire twice as strong. That's an example of an anti-fragile nation. We, especially in the West, are not by any means anti-fragile. We are extremely fragile. Yes, the West is strong. Yes, the United States is strong. However, deep mistakes made at higher levels have caused the country to be fragile. I don't believe, despite its strength, the US is as robust as it once was. But that's a different topic for a different day. And now, let's talk about the most anti-fragile one of them all. Your favorite top G, Andrew freaking Tate. The man has sexual assault charges on him. And even then, and by the way, there's not a support or dismissal of him. Even then, his pop popularity doesn't shrink. It just keeps growing. Andrew Tate has created himself to be anti-fragile to the media. In another video, I described my hypothesis that Andrew Tate probably jailed himself using the Romanian authorities' corruption in order to get massive popularity by being the highest profile case of a man being wrongfully imprisoned. And now I see that there's a rumor of him getting cancer. And then he puts on his Twitter that he doesn't have cancer. But think about that. Who does that rumor actually benefit? It benefits Tate, doesn't it? The sympathy wave created by him, whether he actually has cancer or not, I don't know. You know, the sympathy wave created by this is to his benefit. That's high level strategy if my hypothesis is true. You see, good strategy is the ultimate superpower. It was true back in Roman times, and it's true today. It will always be true. If you want help with your YouTube strategy or your life strategy, then you should check out the link in the description below if you think I can help you. Oh, and by the way, I'm not trying to take credit for coming up with the concept of anti-fragility. It was actually by a mathematician, economist, very interesting person by the name of uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And Taleb, he made massive wealth in trading. I believe it was Forex trading. And then he decides to be a mathematician and economist and comes up with this idea of anti-fragility and among other interesting ideas like ergodicity. 
and you can read more about it in his book Anti-Fragility. Very interesting guy and I think he was the one who came up with the term fuck you money. So if these are topics that you would like me to talk about, please let me know.